Well, today I'm back at a secret location somewhere in northwestern Illinois. We'll call it Location X. And I'm after this Clark forklift. It's a GCX model, 5,500 pound capacity. I know that it's been sitting here for at least 13 years. All the stuff that's in this location was parked here about 13 years ago, around 2005-ish. As far as I know, it ran when it was parked and nobody has touched it since. So I guess we'll just see how it goes. A lot of people were kind of upset with the international end loader because I kind of wrote it off as a lost cause. I don't know that it's completely a lost cause, but it definitely needs a lot more work than we were going to do in a 20 minute video. So let's hope for a happier ending with this machine. Well, there were lots of theories about what this engine is. As far as I know, it is a Mitsubishi. And it's like it's got oil in it, a little bit over full, so it's probably got some condensation in the bottom. But yeah, little Mitsubishi overhead cam four cylinder. I don't know exactly which model it is. Uh, if I find a tag, I'll show you. But it's got oil in it, and it does turn over freely, and all the accessories turn over freely. So, got a decent chance at it. It looks like the radiator's about about half full or half empty depending on your disposition so something's leaking somewhere but we should be able to run it that way I have 4011 tools for cleaning battery cables that don't sound like fingernails on a chalkboard, but of course I forgot to bring them. This will work. I even have a special tool back at the shop for spreading these terminals, but of course I don't have it with me today. And the battery I brought is the wrong frame size, so it won't fit in the little battery box over here. So we're going to have to rely on Isaac Newton to hold it in there for us. So I don't have a key, and I brought along a few other keys I had, and nothing seems to work. It looks like a key out of an Oliver tractor to me, but I tried that and it, it isn't right. So we'll see if we can hotwire it. I don't know, take this little dash panel out, but it's got these button head screws in it. I don't know what's holding them in there. This is cast aluminum, maybe. Yeah, we're not gonna mess with them if we don't have to.
So it looks like it's got one of these big plugs on it, just like a lawn tractor. Wonder if we can just pop that plug off. accessory looks like okay okay good it's even labeled so we got ignition is the big honking one here battery positive I don't know what PR is and then this is the start ground and accessory so we should be able to jump that let me go find my diagnostic paper clip all right change of plans I couldn't find a diagnostic paper clip that fit quite the way I thought it should so I'm just gonna stick this plug back on and we'll there's plenty of terminal sticking out we'll just use a few jumper wires here and you should be good to go so that's ignition we'll hook that up to battery hey a light just came on and I heard a relay click so now this one's hooked up to the start terminal. It should, it should crank when we touch this. And it does. All right, wiring solved. Let's see if we got spark. All right, I'm not that familiar with this engine. I don't know if it has points or if it's electronic ignition. The distributor is over here underneath this upper radiator hose comes out of the side of the engine this way must drive off the yeah that would make sense drive off the cam oh that doesn't seem very good but let's see if we got spark find something that might be a ground here Okay, I don't know if the camera will pick it up or not. Yeah, we better wind this in, that's a pretty good size gap. All right, I'm gonna go turn the key. Negative. Well, I certainly didn't see a spark, did you guys? I guess there's a chance that that valve cover is not a ground. Let's try it again over here. No spark, and our battery is dying. So there is electricity down here. I'm going to see if I can hook up a battery charger real quick if I've got enough extension cords. Well, way down in here is a distributor. I don't know where the coil is. I'm gonna have to tear some stuff apart to find it. Okay, well there's a ballast resistor, so I'm sure that it's got points. So that'd be a good place to start, I think. Looks like a vacuum advance on the distributor, but where is the coil? Okay, I think I see it. It's over here underneath of the, of all this jazz. Well, what can we take off to get us in there? So it looks like I can strip this air box off here real quick and that'll give us a little bit more room. This thing's broken anyway, so the air filter really doesn't do anything. I wonder how long it's been like that. The little latch is broken so it just flaps in the breeze. Anyway, let me strip that off and I'll bring you back. Oh man, okay. So, hopefully you can see this. It does not have points. It's definitely got some kind of an electronic ignition. So, yeah. I don't know if it has a separate module 
or if everything's done right here inside this thing. Like I said, there's your little vacuum advance for the distributor. And down here, buried behind all this stuff, there's the coil right there. So there's your two wires on the primary side of the coil. So we should be able to do our tests there. But what's throwing me off is that, man, you can't see it. Man, they really jam 10 pounds of crap in a five pound bag on a forklift. There's a ballast resistor right there. And normally I would not expect to see a ballast resistor on an electronic ignition system. And even weirder than that, it's not like the Delco setup that I'm used to. So normally on a Delco ignition system, you would have an additional terminal on your battery solenoid. And so when the when the starter motor is engaged, it bypasses the ballast resistor. And then once you release the start position on the key, it goes back to you know running the current through the ballast resistor to the coil. So I don't know how this is set up. Maybe it goes, I don't know, through a different position on the key switch maybe, or, or else it just uses the ballast resistor all the time. Uh, either way, we gotta figure out why we're not getting any spark. Quite a bit of corrosion inside that distributor, but I don't think it should hurt too much. But I don't have enough cable or wire to get my battery charger over here so I have to just charge the battery and then bring it back and then run it down and you know do that kind of a thing so that's where we're at all right I powered up the ignition we should have power here at at least one of these terminals on the coil that one's got power and that one's got power so when we crank it over it should pull one side to ground So, let's try that. I need about eight hands. Okay, no blinky blinky. And since this is a solid state system, I would say that means we've got a bad ignition module. You know, I have a whole book of Clark forklift wiring diagrams and I forgot to bring it with me. It's pretty smart, huh? Well, I think I found the problem. It's not a bad ignition module. This is the wire that comes out of the distributor from the ignition module down to the coil. And it looks like it's just been snipped right in two. Here is the other half of it. And that runs down to the coil. So, I don't know what happened. Got caught in the fan belt, maybe? It sure looks like somebody just cut it. Yeah, I don't know. Well, let me see if I can jam that back together and try to get some spark out of this guy. Well, I dug around. I don't have any butt connectors. All I have is these ring terminals. So I think we can make it work here. Show you guys what I'm thinking. And you probably won't be able to see because there's hardly any room to work in here. Thinking. I don't know what this wire is, but it's really nice to work with. Super, super fine strands. Maybe these yellow ones will work better. They're really bigger.
we just nip these off. I'll just throw a little bit of tape on there and it should work fine. And it's only temporary unless it works. Boom, fixed. Okay, I'm gonna blow out the distributor a little bit, slam the cap back on, and we'll start it over with our testing. All right, we'll try our test again. See, I got power on this side. And actually this time I don't have power on this side, so I think that's a good sign. Let me crank it over here real quick. Hopefully that shows up on camera. Can't see any reason why we won't have spark now. Okay, let's try again. I don't know if I'll be able to see it or not. Yeah, it's a little bit weak, but it's there. May have something to do with that janky uh, ignition hot wire setup that I have. I may not be able to get enough current through that, but let's pour on some propane and see what happens. Okay, I brought a propane tank from my other forklift. I know it's good. I guess we'll find out if my camera is intrinsically safe. So far so good. And I know very little about propane carburetors. I should really learn more about them because I've got a few things that use them, but just really I've never had to work on one. Usually they just they just work. So hopefully this one does too. I hope we don't have a cracked diaphragm somewhere. I believe this is an enrichner valve here and it's I'm not even going to touch it, it's froze up. So yeah, let's see what happens. pressure gauge but there was a light in the bottom of this gauge here that went out so yeah that's a good sign yeah buddy I can't believe it started that easy that's awesome oh I hear a leak Yeah, but I don't smell propane, so maybe that's okay. All right, let's jam some coolant in this thing and give her a little bit of a shakedown. Okay, it runs, but that's a very small part of the equation. We've got to get it to move, and it is buried right up to the axles, so that'll be fun. Probably going to have to jack it up, maybe throw some wood underneath the back wheels. The counterweights just got it buried right down in the in the mud and gravel and then I don't know the condition of the transaxle it appears that this is some kind of an electronic doodad that shifts the, the transmission into gear so I'm not too optimistic about that and I don't know if there's any oil in the transaxle because the dipstick excuse me while I break this tree off the dipstick right there is completely rusted solid so I can't even get it out to check it. Then once we get it running and driving, we still have to get it out of here. And 
that's no small task because there's this huge pile of wood between us and the little lane that runs out to the road. So let's see if we can get it to move and then we'll just take this one step at a time. Probably have to get another machine down here and move some of this wood so I can get my rollback truck in here and winch it up on the deck. Geez, this is almost boring. Everything works. Well, I'm sure the brakes don't work, but everything that really matters works. It's like somebody just turned it off yesterday. So, cool. I don't know. I put coolant in it, it runs good. I tried, and I tried, and I tried, and I just can't get it out of this spot. It moved from where this broken off tree is <laughs> to there, so about three feet. The problem is now the front wheels are stuck in the soft stuff that the, the rear wheels were stuck in before, and it's just the whole front transaxle is dragging the ground, and I can't get it to climb up on those pieces of wood I put in there, so yeah, it's just too soft down here. I think what I'm going to do is get some help. We got to have another machine anyway to move some of these big piles of wood. So I'll see if I can get a hold of a skid steer and somebody to help me pull this thing out of here. And we'll just yank the thing out of this swamp that it's currently stuck in. And I think I can just back my rollback truck right down this little alleyway and winch it on the deck and away we go. Well, I'm out of time to work on this today, so I'm going to have to abandon it and come back with some reinforcements. I think I'll probably stop the video here, and I'll pick up when we come back as a part two, which will be just getting the thing moved back to my place. And I think we're going to come out pretty good on this one. The engine runs, and the thermostat must not even be stuck because it didn't overheat. I ran it for probably 20 minutes here. So, yeah, awesome. It does have a little bit of a miss sometimes, so it's probably going to need a tune-up. And then something's goofy with the, the throttle linkage. It doesn't want to idle down all the time. 
and then I'm sure the brakes don't work but I'm not even going to touch them because I'm scared that it'll it'll lock the wheels up and then we won't be able to drive it at all so yeah that's where we're going to leave it and if you guys like these kind of videos these I don't know what you want to call them videos where you go down and try to pull off a Hail Mary to get something running there are plenty of candidates down here there's an old Inslee dragline crane back there I think it's got an engine in it some kind of a gas engine this thing over here is I don't know what it is it's an old Chevy truck I believe and then they put this backhoe attachment on it and it's got a little six-cylinder power unit there it's like a GM inline six-cylinder engine it's probably stuck but yeah kind of a crazy contraption looks like a deer scrape to me must be a big buck in here somewhere anyway there it is that's an old GMC truck I guess and it's got this crazy backhoe attachment on it I doubt any of this stuff is even possible to revive what does it say on there Badger Machine Company and it's got this old Red Seal power unit probably came off a hay baler or something Yeah, ain't much left of this one. Oh yeah, she's stuck. Okay, a quick follow up on this international loader because I did not expect that video to get nearly as many views as it did. At this time it's got like 100,000 views. Normally my videos get about 4,000 views. So anyway, there's been a whole lot of questions about this thing and I thought I would try to clear it up as best I can. So first of all, if it wasn't clear from the video, the engine is seized. I mean, it's completely locked up solid. And we've already taken the spark plugs out and filled them up with this concoction right here, which is a mixture of diesel fuel and automatic transmission fluid. It's been sitting on that for a couple weeks now and nothing. So I am fairly confident that the head gasket is blown and the engine is seized or possibly the block is broken, you know, that it has frozen and cracked internally and the engine is seized. So that's why we can't just hook up the starter and fire it up. So I don't know if I didn't make that clear in the video or how there was confusion about that, but no, it's completely seized up solid. Uh, second question that I can't believe anyone would ask Did I drain the oil out onto the ground that Water coolant oily nasty milkshake looking concoction. Did I drain it out on the ground and the answer is No, of course. I didn't drain it on the ground. I actually drained it into a nest of endangered bald eagles And I was laughing the whole time All right guys, I want to thank you for watching and I'm glad we finally had a positive result People are getting a little bit, you know, they're getting to the end of their rope with me as far as these, you know, revivals go. You know, we go out with the best of intentions to fix these machines and it just, the circumstances don't allow it. There aren't easy fixes for all these things. But this one turned out to be extremely easy. Uh, I started on this about 9 o'clock this morning. I actually left my house about 9 o'clock this morning. And it's just after lunchtime now. So really put very little effort into it. And I think we're going to have a, a really good machine when we get done. So... Stay tuned for the next video where we come down here, pick it up, drag it back to my house, and then start to fix all the things that are definitely wrong with it. And we got a lot of new subscribers and new viewers to the channel, so if you're new here, welcome aboard. It's kind of gotten a little bit out of my control. Uh, I never really expected the, the channel here to have more than just a few dozen viewers, and things are kind of ramping up quickly. So there may be some changes coming to the channel in the future, just a heads up. Uh, I got to do some things to kind of protect my, my privacy since we have a lot of new eyes and uh, a lot of new viewers and a lot of people that I don't recognize. So anyway, it's been kind of fun. I'm getting a lot of constructive, helpful criticism like you yak too much and just shut up and fix it. So those kind of comments really help keep me encouraged and I uh, hope you guys keep it up. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, I'll catch you guys on the next one.